Plain Nylots, River Lake Nylots, and Review. Sorry about that. She was angry. I forgot to pay the rent. Now, I see you moving north now on the plains. Oh, hell have no fury like a woman's wrath. And yes, you figured out my pattern. Moving north is the Itza group. It was between 1650 and 1735 that they began moving out of Uganda and settling around Mount Elgon. This caused interaction with the Bantu subgroup Babakusu and the Ugandan tribe of Bagusu. Hmm. There are some stories of, of the past the Bagusu practiced cannibalism. Human eating? Oh, my. That is... Wow. Yes, but it happens more often than you think. Okay, Doctor. You're straying from what I wanted to talk about. The main point I'm trying to get across is the connection between the Babakusu and Etso was very strong and resulted in assimilation. Also, their interaction between the Ugandan Karamojong has made them a small group today. Alright, fair enough. Now, continue moving north, please. I would like to take a break soon. It is Saturday. And? Fine. I will hurry. Moving north, we can see the last plain Nilotic group of Turkana. They were found around Mount Moroto in modern-day Uganda. They moved during the 17th century to the southwest side of the Kenyan Lake Turkana. And their neighbors? Getting to that. Yes, they were in conflict with the mentioned Samburu and Rendao because of limited resources such as livestock, land, and water. It is a very dry and arid area. Unlike around the Lake Victoria area. You read my mind. Now, it's time to discuss the River Lake Nihilots. The only group that is in Kenya is the Luo, having settled around the Lake Victoria area. River, Lake, Nile, Lake Victoria. Oh, that, easy, easy. Of course. There are three main groups and one group we have already discussed about in the Bantus, the Abasuba. You had mentioned they are not outright from the Luo background. They have been assimilated so much they are sometimes considered in both groups. You are listening. Now, what makes the three other groups different? The main point to take home is when the groups migrated from Uganda to their current settings. You see, the Joko Jok were the first to migrate to Kenya from Archo Lialand, settling at the Romongi Hill at the end of the 1400s. They moved through Sakwa, Alego, Asembo to South Nyanza today. All right, keep going. I have to pay the rent. Joko Orini was next in queue and they entered Kenya more north than the Joka Jok. On their migration south, they passed Mount Elgon, Tororo, Alego, and Nyoma. By the 1600s, they had moved to Kasumu and Nyakch region. Oh, I have a friend who is in Asembo, so that must be a Joka or Wing. Uh, and the last group? Joko Omolo first settling in Samia and Yimbo region in the early 1600s. They are now located in the South Nyanza. Well, Luana, I must say I'm very impressed with your knowledge of your background. I could not find too many wrong things you said. You know, today ended up being kind of a fun day. I mean, for being in a museum and all. I will take that as a thank you. Now, if you can go over the similar factors and effects of the migration groups, we can go grab a refreshment to enjoy the rest of the day. Easy. The push factors are conflicts and fighting in the group's homeland. Disease and epidemics with other natural events such as floods or droughts. Also, a growing population in the homeland. Now. You tell me the pool factors. Uh-huh. Okay. Buana Raiz. Wanda. Now, some factors that pull groups into new areas are 
search for better land for livestock and farming, or even fishing grounds. The desire to find new lands and adventure is another pull factor. You are turned now for some effects, and then we are off. Okay, easy. When a new group moves into an area, this results in an increase in population in the area, obviously. The new group has to interact with their neighbors. This is done in forms of intermarriage, trading of cultural practices and goods, and even conflicts. Yes, and these conflicts gave rise to displacement of some groups, forcing them to move. It can also lead to assimilation and absorption of groups such as the Southern Kushites who are no longer around. Finally, we are done. Well, we are never done. Have you thought of the exact ways the major groups are organized socially, economically and politically in their more recent times? No then you need to understand this to see how Kenyan is what it is today. Come back next week and we will talk about it. Fine. Just bring some of that cuckoo. Museum is closing. Just in time. Let's go get that chai. And talk about the England versus Spain game. No problem.